uh, to host uh, Pablo Cirrone. Uh, Pablo Cirrone uh, has received a uh, uh, master thesis in application of plastic scintillator in medical physics in Catania, in the University of Catania. And then he got a PhD in 2003 with the thesis, discussing a thesis on the use of Monte Carlo GN4 code for hadron therapy, applica therapy application. Then after many activity, for example, in 2006, he's a member of, uh, for, of Giant Steering Board and he's responsible of advanced example. Uh, since 2007, he's responsible of the proton therapy beam line and interdisciplinary beam line at the Nazio Laboratory Nazionale del Sud uh, of Catania and coordinating various uh, experimental group. And uh, last not least, today is responsible is responsible of uh, the project Impulse H 2020 for the realization of an innovative dosimetric system for laser accelerator and conventional proton and ion beams, and is contra professor of the Medi of, of medical physics at the physics department of the Catania University. So uh, it's a pleasure that I give the floor to Pablo Cirone to talk uh, to talk uh, to us about ion acceleration by laser metal interaction. Pablo, the floor is yours. Okay, okay, Lucio, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for Just the Just a invitation. second. It's good that we go out in English or everybody speaks Italian. There is, if there is somebody that doesn't speak Italian, we are very happy to continue in English. It's not a problem at all, but okay. Do you see some comment, uh, Tina, on the chat? No, I don't see any comments. Everybody agrees that we gone in Italian. But, uh, uh, wait, no, understand. no, no, no. There is one who says Very I good. am not interested. Uh, English, please. Okay. Also, okay. If you want uh, the recording to be used also by strangers, uh, by foreigners, it's better to have it in English. Yeah, in fact, <laughs> this is fact. true, but the same that is not for recording. But if there is one, see, if there is more, more one person or more than two, 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 person. two, two persons, two, we, are two very, persons. we are very happy to go in English. Thanks a lot for signing this. Okay, and thanks to Ferrario to remind to Massimo to remind me. Okay, go ahead, uh, Paolo. Okay, okay, okay. So, Lucio, thank you very much again, and thank you to, to the Google community of the NFN Accelerator to give me this uh, opportunity. I prepared uh, uh, these slides to, let's say, discuss a little bit uh, yes as the title said uh, which are the tools that uh, uh, nowadays we are using to accelerate uh, particles uh, with uh, uh, laser matter interaction laser matter interaction is a complex uh, things so that you can do a lot of uh, different you can have a lot of different approach i will describe uh, briefly one of these that is the most useful for the acceleration of proton and and ion so I will, uh, I will discuss some scheme, uh, some typical scheme for particle acceleration. And uh, then in the second part of my, of my talk, experience in these uh, in these fields that uh, is dated back uh, to 2003. Uh, more or less, and then the last uh, slice will be around this high lose facility that we are finally starting to to plan to design for uh, the acquisition of uh, a night power laser uh, in our uh, uh, at our laboratory uh, to accelerate with the main aim to accelerate uh, protons and and ion. So here there is uh, for. Uh, some reference just to give to people that want to uh, deeper study this part. Uh, there are in particular three very good and nice uh, review on uh, particle uh, proton and ion acceleration. And uh, quite old the book tenure, but it's one of the most clear, most complete uh, book that uh, uh, describe the basics physics uh, and also application and simulation of uh, interaction of uh, high power laser. This is for, for matter of uh, uh, further studies for, for people. Well, which are the basic ingredients to, that we have at our disposal to accelerate particle? From one side, we have uh, high power laser. When we speak of up power laser, we speak of something that is uh, higher than terawatt on the target 
so we, we intend this, 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 this power and very short, very short pulse so with very short, we intend something between 20 and 500 femtoseconds. So we have uh, uh, this typical uh, short and high power laser, basically, not, not usually the, 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 the most common laser that are used for this uh, purpose are titan sapphire based uh, uh, laser where uh, the, the medium, uh, uh, the gain medium, as well as the pump uh, lasers are based on uh, titanium sapphire. This is, of course, not on the only. There are many materials. This is one of the most common in this in this specific application. So this uh, uh, this this beams has a spectral range uh, around one thousand nanometers. Uh, here there is uh, yeah this this is the the, the temporal uh, duration of the pulse between twenty. Okay, here here it, I write uh, five hundred. Here it's yeah, five hundred femtosecond. Then yeah, it's more correct to extend a little bit. And the, 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 the total energy of the, of the beam is uh, between usually 20 millijoule, 10 millijoule, uh, up to one joule. Well, so this is the main ingredient, a laser, no? a laser. And uh, you see in this plot, uh, uh, this is a typical plot uh, that show uh, the progress uh, of the capability that we have, that we had in the past, and we have now to focus uh, uh, some light intensity, some laser intensity expressed in this unit, but per centimeter square, uh, in since the starting, the invention of, of laser up to more or less now. And uh, yeah, there, is, there was a grow at the beginning, and you see this plateau uh, for 20, 25 years, and then in at this point, when the circuit pulse amplification technique was invented, that, that I will describe in the next slide, there was a very, very, very huge slope, increase of the slope in this curve. And today, uh, we are around the intensity that are around 10 to 22, 10 to 23 watts per centimeter square. That allow uh, the, 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 a lot of new. Uh, and exciting physics, but when you want to accelerate particle with such kind of protons or ion with such kind of particle, what happens is that you need uh, not only the laser but some target. Uh, usually, it is a, a solid target, uh, a thin solid target in the range uh, between some micron to some nanometers. And you see here this uh, this this this. this uh, uh, animation in which there is the laser that the touch uh, the target the target is this whole uh, the metal plate uh, so the laser uh, interact with the target and some bunch of particles start to be uh, extracted by the by the target and you make uh, make application uh, well this on the left is a, a peak stimulation is one uh, it's a, it's a simulation of uh, a typical laser uh, that interacts with, uh, with the with the target. Uh, this is a simulation that we realize that, that the line and this uh, the, the beam that you use that the line in line in this in this period. And I like a, a lot to 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 show uh, just to understand uh, the, the the degree of the power that, that we are uh, we are dealing with. Uh, this is a slide from Gerard Moreau that uh, says that. Uh, that one petawatt laser that is uh, usually focused in such small, uh, uh, such small uh, uh, focus, uh, and that correspond in fact to a power, a specific power around uh, 10 to 22, 10 to 23 watt per centimeter square, up to this power, and this power is equivalent to like the pressure of 10 million of to the fell uh, in just in one finger. So yeah, this is something really extreme. And uh, this is something that uh, yeah, help us to understand the incredible power that we are able to concentrate in the matter with uh, such this kind of, of laser. And this is in fact the, the principle uh, of uh, laser amplification. Uh, this, uh, in, in, the, in this slide, you can see the technical solution that uh, 
uh, Gerard Moreau and Donna Strickland uh, were able to invent in the 16, uh, and this is the, the so-called SIRPED uh, pulsed amplification technique. That give uh, us uh, the possibility to, in fact, increase the power of laser uh, practically uh, without an horizon uh, uh, in this moment. Yeah, there are technical limitations, of course, but in principle, this can be done really at, uh, up to very huge scale. So the principle, it's, it's very, in principle, very, very simple. We have, uh, the, this is the scheme in which a typical um, laser amplifier is composed. We have uh, some uh, short pulse oscillator where we, are, we have the initial seed of our laser uh, that, is a short, that is a short pulse. And then this, this short pulse uh, uh, is uh, uh, directed uh, towards some pair of gratings. And these gratings is able to disperse the spectrum and it's able also to stretch the uh, pulse, so the time duration of this, uh, of this pulse uh, uh, of a factor up to 1,000. Then the beam came back. Now we have a pulse that is uh, long, that is uh, uh, dispersed in frequency, and uh, it is uh, so a low power beam that can be amplified uh, with, uh, uh, without problems of heating and uh, without problems uh, related to the high power. So we are able to amplify this with other power amplifiers. And uh, so the beam, the intensity of this laser grow. And then we have at the hand of this very high energy pulse that is still uh, a pulse, a, a light pulse that is uh, dispersed and is, that, that, that with a wide spectrum. And uh, with exactly an opposite, uh, opposite scheme uh, than the first one, uh, a second pair of grating is used to back uh, uh, the, the, the role of, of the, the, the work of the first pair of grating. So we can back and we can obtain at the end of this uh, uh, pulse that is now with of high energy and again, very short. And this is the typical pulse that, in fact, we use in the, the that we direct to the matter to perform uh, to perform the the interaction. This is a typical scheme of one of the many laser system of this kind that are installed uh, around the world. This is the system, the four petawatt system of the uh, Center for Relativistic Laser Science uh, in Gwangju in, uh, in South Korea. They have uh, basically two petawatt beam line, uh, and the, the oscillator is here. This is the first stature, and then you have a different stage of amplification so that they, they can use different uh, energies depending on the amplification. The very nice things of laser system is that they are uh, upgradable somehow, and you can amplify light uh, uh, during the different path, and you may have a different power and different time duration if you want, uh, according to the physics experiments that you want to perform. The um, acceleration in the MEV region of ION uh, uh, started uh, yeah, started well before the 2000, but in the 2000, that is the, 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 the material that I'm presenting this slide, starting since 2000, we start to accelerate particle from the rear part of our target. So in a, in a way that is typical to, to and producing beams that are very close to, to, the, to the beam that, that today we have with the acceleration, with the conventional acceleration in some, to some extent. Um, up to, 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 to 2000, the, 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 the laser was, uh, the laser beam impacted in the target, but the target was usually thick, and we observed the, the plasma and the, and, and the particles propagating in the same, from the same, from the same side of the laser. Uh, in the 2000, a series of experiments uh, with the thin target uh, started to demonstrate the possibility to accelerate particles from the rear side of this thin foil. So in this plot, there is this uh, scheme where we have, uh, you have the laser, the laser, the laser pulse, very short and very intense, uh, that produce a preplasma in the, in the, in the target. Uh, and uh, the production of this uh, preplasma make the target uh, transparent for the electromagnetic uh, 
pulse and this produces some uh, electric field that is able to accelerate uh, electrons and ion uh, in the rear part of the target, so in the same direction of the laser propagation. <laughs> Um, these are the, these that I reported here are the very the first rewards basically where this phenomena was uh, observed uh, at that time uh, the intensity was were of the order of 10 to 19 watt per centimeter square and uh, yeah the protons uh, basically that were observed as well in this experiment mainly came from the impurity that are uh, uh, contained inside the, inside the target. Uh, the acceleration scheme that we have in such, uh, in such process, it's quite uh, complicated. Uh, the, the scheme that I described here, that I'm describing this slide, slide as well, is uh, called the uh, uh, TNSA target normal sheet acceleration. It's one of the most studied, the most, uh, let's say, robust uh, models that we may have, at least in the regime that uh, today we have in the majority of the laser system that are installed. And uh, it is uh, something of, uh, I mean, com complex because at least there are two phenomena that uh, occurs inside the, the target. Uh, we have uh, from one side an absorption of energy and an absorb and and then the heating of the electrons. The, the electrons are heated and the, hard, the, the matter is ionized, and uh, we observe an, a, 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 some um, quantity of electrons that uh, are extracted in vacuum from the target, and they produce. Uh, a very huge electric field in very small dimensions. And, uh, and this electric field is responsible for the acceleration. And at the same time, we have a momentum absorption that is mainly due to some ponderomotive force that is uh, related uh, to the local current and uh, of the and of the electromagnetic momentum. So we have some radiation pressure that uh, we observe in the plasma that uh, again produce the extraction of these electrons and the production of this sheet sheet region. And uh, the most important uh, parameter, uh, not this is not the only, but one of the most important parameter. Uh, uh, that deals with the, this uh, cap capability to produce uh, uh, to produce um, particles and this sheet field, let's say, is uh, the critical density that depends on the web wavelength of the laser. And uh, uh, basically, when the elect electronic density of our target is bigger than this this uh, this uh, uh, density, the plasma uh, basically. Uh, we have the production of an overdense plasma and the electromagnet and, and the target is basically, um, I mean, uh, uh, not transparent to the, to, the, to, the, to the target. While if the electronic density go below this, this, this level, then we start with this plasma transparent where the electromagnetic uh, wave is able to penetrate inside the 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 target and start to produce this phenomena and yeah here we have uh, the some profile that we observe of the electronic density uh, of the electrons that are heated by the uh, arrival of this uh, of this laser that uh, start to ionize and produce this plasma and this density that go below and uh, initiate this uh, uh, this process uh, the parameters uh, that are connected to the production of the electric field uh, are the uh, temperatures of this hot uh, temperature of these hot electro electrons with the by length, uh, and it's it's useful just to understand that to see that the interaction and the production of this sheet field uh, sheet electric field occurs. Uh, uh, in space of the order of the Debye length effect, that is of the order of micron with temperature 
of the hot electron of the order of the MAV. And this produces some electric field that is of the order of terawatt, teravolt per meter. So it's a huge field that is uh, responsible for, for acceleration. Well, there are many, many um, uh, scaling law that uh, uh, allow us to, 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 to see where we can arrive with such kind of, of beam. This is, uh, this is a plot in which uh, the elect electron, el uh, electron temperature in KV is expressed as a function of this strange quantity that we a lot to use in our field that is, uh, uh, that is uh, I mean, this uh, um, space in intensity multiplied by the square of the, uh, of the lambda of the, of the laser lambda, so the um, laser lambda. And this is a, a specific uh, uh, quantity that uh, is called irradiance irradiance. So you see that this uh, electron temperature, of course, uh, increase when this I lambda square tends to, 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 to grow. And uh, yeah, coming back to the scaling law here, you can see uh, again this, uh, sorry for this, uh, uh, perhaps I can put, okay. Um, this uh, uh, irradiant. This, this, this is another another plot in which uh, there is another scaling law where uh, the maximum, uh, sorry, the maximum proton uh, energy expressed in MED for different facility are reported as a function of this uh, again of this irradiance. Um, and uh, okay, what uh, we can observe uh, is that. Uh, there are two different uh, slope, two different uh, behavior that is uh, mainly connected uh, uh, to the time duration of the laser laser pulse. And uh, just uh, as uh, an example, this, this name basically are the name of the different facilities that uh, are around the world, laser facility where different laser of different, with pulse of different time duration, in fact, uh, are, uh, are present. Just to uh, have uh, some uh, uh, idea, uh, the Gemini laser in, uh, for example, uh, uh, at the Radford Hepton Laboratory in UK, uh, it's able to have uh, and to transport an energy around 12 joule with this wavelength and the time duration of, uh, of uh, 15 femtoseconds. The laser is focused in spots that are of the order of, uh, of the micron. A typical spot uh, dimension is uh, two by two, three by three, five by five micron square. So it's very, 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 very small. And uh, here we are able to, to, to produce uh, a specific intensity, a specific power, I mean, some watts per centimeter square of the order of 10 to 21. So, here, look, here there, is, there are 50 seconds. This is the 500, uh, uh, sorry, 50 femtosecond, 500 femtosecond. So there are more than 100 of, uh, of order of magnitude in the, in, the, in the time duration. But uh, in this time duration, in this case, for example, we have an energy that is much bigger because the energy is uh, now concentrated in much long time. So in the case of Vulcan, uh, the petawatt system that is still installed at, the, uh, at RAL again, we have this energy and with the, with a much longer pulse duration and an intensity that is uh, still of the order, uh, if you make the calculation of the order of 10 to 21 watt per centimeter square. Okay, just to give an overview. This is another scaling law in which in this case, uh, the maximum proton energy again is plotted um, against the, the terawatt, the power that we have on target. That means that the, 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 the real power that we are able to transport with our laser system um, uh, up to the, to the target. And uh, yeah, we see here that uh, with the already laser of the order or uh, 50, 70, 90 terawatt on the target, depending of the, on the time uh, duration of the pass, uh, we are able to accelerate uh, proton beams that range between, uh, let's say, 10 and 20, and 20 MAV. 
And uh, well, just to, to, to today, in the most advanced the laser system, where we quite easily reach 500, 600 terawatt at the target, although also more, we, can, we are able to reach energies up to 100 MAV. So coming back briefly to the 2000, this uh, is uh, just an extract from the paper uh, of Snevely et al, uh, where they, for the first time, observed these protons uh, that uh, were accelerated in the, um, in the direction of the, of the laser. And they, we, they, 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 they were able to accelerate protons up to 60 MAV. 58 MeV, let's say, with the, some uh, uh, efficiency in the energy integration. And uh, they used the 423 Joule beam with a very long, uh, long pulse duration. Today, the, the, the laser, we, uh, the, the, we use the laser much uh, with, with, an, with an impulse much, much shorter. But at that time, the, the, the high repetition rate and short pulse technique was not so still, was not developed. So uh, they were, they used this such kind of very high energy, very huge energy in uh, uh, 0.5 picosecond. And this is a typical beam that you can observe in radiochromic film. The radiochromic film is a typical detector when you can see the image of the beam just produced to the target. Uh, if uh, uh, okay, this is uh, another another from from another paper. I extracted this uh, this another review paper that is all all these plots are extracted from the paper that I uh, show in the first slide. So you can everyone can 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 study better this uh, this, this, this plot. Uh, here there is another uh, another plot in which uh, another scaling law where uh, there are many experiments performed with many different system and uh, in this case we have in the y axis the number of proton per mev so it's a spectrum per steradiant um, someone try and okay they try to to, to make a, a, a scaling law for this number or number of 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 particles and again you can see that uh, uh, energy between 30 and 40 MeV can be uh, reached with the, the good uh, the good condition. Today, the world record somehow, if we can call this uh, a record, it's uh, it's the 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 the, the results that uh, was obtained at the Vulcan laser uh, in UK at uh, the Rathcore Laboratory with uh, an intensity of the order of 20 watt per centimeter square. Uh, and uh, they were able to accelerate and to study, okay, you can see here with different kind of target, this is the thickness of the target that they used. They were able to accelerate uh, with a pulse duration uh, laser of the order of 0.9 picosecond uh, near 100 MAV, in fact, the proton beams that is today perhaps the most uh, high energy that was, uh, that came, that was obtained with uh, this uh, TNSA target normal sheet acceleration uh, uh, technique. Uh, I want to just uh, spend uh, one minute on uh, the role of the pulse contrast uh, to send uh, a laser light to a target uh, uh, is is, is, is not the only things that we have to do when, to accelerate particle. Uh, it, it, it's not really, it, it, there are many, many uh, problems that and many uh, aspects that must be observed. One of these is that the, 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 the pulse itself, the laser pulse itself, that uh, it's, uh, the, 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 the laser pulse is uh, intrinsically complex. And usually we have, uh, uh, you can see here, this is the, the, the time zero is the moment in which uh, we have the maximum, the maximum energy in this pulse. But we can see here that there are some uh, uh, spike that are called the pre-pulse and some uh, slope in, in, in this part that start around uh, 100 of picosecond before. Then this depends on laser, on laser system, on the technology that there is below. But 
the mo mo a very important aspect, uh, uh, and, and but but the, the the pulse contrast that basically is the ratio between the maximum and the minimum that is uh, usually of the order of 10 to minus 10 or 10 to minus 9. Uh, it's very important because it somehow um, from from the, from this somehow depends the way in which particles are accelerated. Uh, this because the prepulse usually produce uh, such kind of so-called preplasma, so the target can be uh, heated before the arrival of, of the main pulse. These can be a good things, uh, depending on the density of the, of the electrons that are generated in this uh, uh, prepulse, but can be also uh, something of bad from the point of view of acceleration, because if the prepulse is too big, you can for example, in principle, destroy completely the target before the arrival of the final uh, of the final and the, and the higher uh, and higher pulse, for example. Uh, or you can produce uh, some uh, effect, uh, nonlinear effect in the propagation of the electromagnetic wave itself. Or you can have some uh, um, reflection, for example, of the laser itself back to, to the to the laser system. So there, there are today many strategies. I just want to show this slide just to give you the feeling that uh, uh, there are many aspects in, in, in a laser system that must be controlled in order to get an acceleration. And the pulse contrast is uh, one of the, of the most important. In general, as a general rule, higher is the contrast that we have and higher is the quality of the beam of the proton beams and the ion beams that we are able to accelerate at the hand. These are the typical property of uh, a PNSA ion beam. So uh, the beams is characterized by very low emittance, a duration that is of the order of picosecond, a little bit more. Uh, we have a lot of intensity. We have a very huge intensity. This depends on the target, of course, as well as so something between 10 to 11, 10 to 13, uh, proton for, for, for each shot uh, and for energy that start from zero up to a cutoff that depends on the laser power and the laser efficiency. So we have a very high current and in general uh, a compactness of the system because in principle a part of the laser we are able to accelerate in, in micron dimension. Uh, there are some negative uh, aspects of this beam. Negative, it depends again on the on the application that you have to do. But we have uh, usually these beams are very large. They have a very angular, very huge angular divergency and a very broad energy spectra. So they are characterized by this uh, very high, uh, huge energy spectra. This is a this is a typical uh, again image. Uh, uh, of these uh, proton beams accelerated with the system, and this one is the system at the Queen University in Belfast. It's another system, uh, and laser are, and protons generated are uh, detected by radiochromic field. There are many applications. I, I, it's practically impossible to to to, to discuss uh, everything in in the in the in the ion produced with with the laser matter interaction in this PNSA. Uh, regime. Uh, there is the so-called ultra-fast proton radiography where, uh, uh, yes, you can do really radiography of what is happening uh, in the target itself or in the plasma itself using this very fast uh, and intense beam. Um, you can do interaction of ion beams with the, the plasma itself that you generate, and there are many studies on charge exchange uh, or in the stopping power in plasma or studies of the interaction between the particles that can came from conventional accelerator or generated by the laser itself. And there are studies of uh, radiobiology. You can produce uh, this very huge, uh, huge uh, uh, quantity of beam that can be used for medical application as well. That is one of the fields where I personally, I personally work. So we have uh, also application related to the inertial confinement because lasers are used uh, uh, for uh, inertial confinement and fusion experiment for energy production, particle therapy, particle physics application. You can generate very intense and non-linear uh, uh, regime where uh, many application uh, and many physics can be, can be studied. So 
one one question is how we can improve uh, this yeah we can improve this uh, ranking up the intensity of the laser beam of course but this is not completely true to increase the intensity so to increase the electron temperature of um, in the plasma that is somehow connected to the acceleration process or the density of these uh, electrons uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 there are different strategies. You know? In general, what we have to do is to try to enhance the coupling between the energy that is transported by the laser to the electrons uh, to improve this efficiency you know? and try to improve this uh, uh, electron density concentration in order to, in fact, improve the efficiency of the process. And there are many studies. I prepared three slides just to give a feedback of what people do in this field to improve this uh, acceleration technique. There is people, for example, just reported three, but there is a very huge literature on this. There are uh, people that, for example, worked on the, the possibility to, um, let's say, use the transverse confinement of the electron to concentrate better the energy. So using very small, uh, very small, uh, uh, target, like in this case, uh, for example, we are speaking of target two by two uh, micron square. And uh, this is uh, the number of protons that were generated for the same condition of the laser with uh, uh, the surface area of our target. And uh, this was done, for example, with the 100 terawatt system and 10 to the 19 watt per centimeter square. Uh, you can invent or use different targets. Uh, you can invent a target that are made in different shape, for example. In this case, uh, uh, there is this shape that is a conical shape. Let's say laser came, for example, in this case from the left, and we have this conical shape uh, target in which the electron, ele electronic current uh, start uh, to um, uh, generate, increase the energy of the, of the uh, electrons that are heated. And basically the source of this proton energy, in fact, is the direct laser pressure that uh, is occurring in this, uh, in the, in this region. And uh, yeah, for example, in, in this plot, you can see no? some, uh, some results here. You can see this is the, the number of electrons that are generated in the case of a normal target and in the case uh, of, uh, um, of uh, uh, this conical target. This is the energy of the electrons and uh, the shape of this is connected with the electron temperature. And this is translated in the maximum energy of protons that we observed. So you can see here the increase of the energy that is, was observed in this, uh, in this case with this uh, 18 joule and 700 femtosecond laser, the trident laser of, uh, of Lausanne in the USA. Uh, you can optimize, for example, in another way, to, you can optimize the structure of the target itself. Uh, this is a case in which nanostructures are were put the, before the uh, plastic target. This was a plastic target with some nanoparticles. So, so these nanoparticles somehow are able to increase the coupling between uh, the electric field of uh, uh, the laser of the electromagnetic uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, field of, of the laser with with the electrons so you have uh, you increase the efficiency of the energy of the energy transportation and then you have a higher electrons higher temperature for the electron higher electric field and uh, increase of the again of the of the energy so this is another strategy uh, that you can use finally you can have also some optical control or uh, somehow some post acceleration uh, this is a nice a nice work that uh, were done uh, four years ago from uh, our colleague in uh, in uk uh, they basically constructed the target that is made by flat part with some uh, uh, you see here uh, uh, like a spring that is connected and directed to the target. And when the main laser pulse uh, uh, interact with this part, uh, you produce this electron that start to flow in the spring and then in, the, in, the, in this coil. And this coil and the current that flow in this coil produces some uh, uh, transverse, some, some electric field that has some component that is in the direction itself of the 
of the laser and some uh, and the end orthogonal to the laser itself. And what, what happens is that you synchronize uh, uh, well the component of a given energy with the, with the laser for the, and the, the proton, the protons that in the meantime are generated by the interaction. You, what you what you obtain basically is the focusing of the protons that are generated here, but also an acceleration of the protons. That this was something uh, uh, quite unexpected. Uh, and here is the results of the beam. You see here, this is the case in which it was, there was this flat target and the production of the beam with the maximum energy, let's say 7.5 MAV in this case. Well, if you use this uh, coupling between this uh, foil and this coil, uh, you you can see here is much more concentrated the beam so you are able to focus the beam here but also uh, you observe an increase in, in the final energy cutoff that was something of interest I mean, they are continuing to study and to optimize this part well i go towards the hands of this uh, this talk uh, this is the list uh, today of the ultra high intensity laser facility uh, around uh, around the world uh, with different characteristics, uh, but uh, all facilities that are used mainly to study plasma physics and uh, acceleration process. Uh, there was a recent uh, breakthrough again to the South Korea um, from the South Korea colleague that uh, were able last year to obtain uh, with the four petawatt laser that uh, uh, is there installed uh, uh, the highest. Uh, intensity up to now reached that is 10 to 23 bars per centimeter square that uh, of course with some regularity they used the particular setup they were able to increase the, 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 the contrast and they were able to reach this very high intensity that surely open a new new possibility for for study so infn lns contribution uh, in, in this field. We start uh, around 2000, 2000 uh, with the, the, the pioneering uh, experiment that were performed by the group of Professor Torrisi in our, in our lab, uh, together in collaboration with Lech. Then there were different experiments. These were all experiments basically that the INFN Committee 5 uh, um, uh, founded. Uh, there was uh, the Lilia project, uh, and uh, I personally started uh, around this the, 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 the here in, with this project that was headed by the Milan Group, uh, where we started to, to realize um, some uh, diagnostic system and to think how to optimize the interaction. Then there was uh, the uh, Element project for three years. Uh, that uh, bring basically to the realization of uh, a small prototype uh, of transport system that then was realized and installed uh, in LI. I will show you the status of this in the next slide. And other experiment like L3, IA, LPA2 that were to experiment again led by the Milan group uh, that and we worked in, in this case in collaboration with the PISA facility again to accelerate and optimize the proton acceleration. And now we are starting this adventure with this ILUSE, ILUSE facility. Uh, this is what uh, we did uh, in LI. LI beamline is the one of the pillar of uh, LI, as most of you, I think, know. Uh, there, there are installed four high power laser. We will work, we are working with the two of these uh, uh, high power laser, the laser uh, uh, three and the laser four, that is one petawatt and 10 hertz, uh, 30 femtosecond, 30 joule, and the laser four, that will be the 10 petawatt, 1.5 kilojoule, that is not still there. And in a, a telebeam line, there is, a, there is a room that is this one that is called the Elimaya, that is completely dedicated to the proton and ion acceleration and to make and perform studies with these beams. Uh, this is the, the Elimaya, in fact, the user beam line. This is a, this is, is a beam line that uh, within this, this year, uh, I hope will be fully commissioned. We are participating to the commissioning of this beam, and the, the next year will be hopefully open to the, to the users. And we have a look here, the laser that came from the compressor that is on the first 
flow. So the laser go down. We are here are in, in, the, in, the, in the basement at minus two. Uh, the beams, uh, uh, there is a plasma mirror that is a system to improve the light laser contrast. Then this is the scattering chamber where the laser touch the target and start the production of particle and particle accelerated in this direction and are transported in this direction where experiments are, are performed. This is the part that we call Ovian accelerator, in fact. And uh, this is the part that we call an element that was completely realized by uh, INFN in the framework of the element, uh, element tender. And this is the beam line as today appear after the installation. So again, this is the scattering, the interaction chamber. Here there are four quadruples. Uh, there are five, sorry, four, five uh, um, permanent magnet quadruples that are used to focus the beam. This is an energy electron system that is used to select in energy the beam. Then we have another part that transport the beam up, up to the point where irradiation will be performed. And uh, in this period, we are performing the commissioning together with the, the LI beamline uh, colleague. Uh, what do we expect uh, after what we call it the, the enab enabling or pilot experiment uh, within this year is to produce uh, uh, beam in the energy range between uh, 3 and 60 MeV uh, with uh, uh, 10 to 8 uh, protons uh, at the end of the beam line and an energy spread not bigger than uh, uh, plus or minus uh, 5%. And uh, we will work here at 1 Hertz. So we are uh, what else, a little bit uh, uh, slower, but we are more or less uh, uh, one per second. We are able to uh, shot the beam and uh, collect the results, make a diagnostic, transport the beam up to the um, up to the to the radiation point. And uh, this is the official document of LI in which uh, uh, people from LI, from the Queen University, and from INFN, in fact, are performing this uh, commissioning experiments during during. Uh, this is what we did in the last few years in the framework of L3AI and LPA2 experiments founded by the uh, INFN. Uh, in PISA, there is a facility and together with where okay, they, have, they have a laser, uh, they, a laser system uh, that uh, is uh, able to reach power around 200, 300 terawatt. And with this system, we are able to to accelerate particle and we are starting uh, uh, to, to perform radiobiology experiments, uh, um, radiobiology and radiation experiments. Um, I can show you some yeah, recent results uh, on this. Uh, for example, uh, okay, these, these are four quadruples. These quadruples were realized in the framework of the ELIMED experiment in 2013. And these are, this is the dosimetric setup that was uh, out, this is inside the chamber, okay? So the laser uh, arrived from, from uh, here, from this point, and then the proton beam traversed the quadruples and then reach uh, this flange here, the beam exit in air, and then we are able to observe uh, with different diagnostics that were realized in the, in the framework of the LP a2 experiments, uh, we observe the beam, and this, for example, is a typical beam that exit from uh, quadruples. Uh, and in a recent experiment, we were able to um, obtain around six gray per shot uh, inside the chamber and around two gray per shot outside the chamber. And that is uh, a, a big number. It's a very good number also to perform very particular radiation experiments uh, uh, of interest in, the, in, in, medical, in medical application. So the diagnostic uh, possibility to move the detector. And uh, I like uh, to be honest, and I'm happy to, to, to tell this to this community. There are many, many devices here, many, many, many work that uh, uh, were done in the past and also in present day and founded by an FN, by the committee five, uh, and, that, and uh, we are very proud you not know, to re to use it, to exchange information uh, and uh, to, let's say, uh, 
use uh, this capital uh, that came from NFN to go further towards a new experiment and new and new field possibilities. So finally, just uh, some slide on this uh, I Luce project. Uh, the, um, the INFN had the, the, the funds to realize in the framework of a much wider project that is called BCT, breast cancer therapy. That is a project that, that is in, let's say, a collaboration between uh, the University of Catania and uh, one of the biggest hospitals in, in Catania, that is the Ospedale Canizzaro and the NFN itself, of course, this project was founded to improve the capability of radiation to treat the breast cancer, in, in, in fact. And inside this project, uh, we had get the funds to realize uh, a laser and radiation system to accelerate uh, protons and electrons. We introduced in the project electrons as well uh, to accelerate, uh, in fact, proton for medical application to produce uh, the so-called new flash beam, which you can demonstrate the flash regime. That is uh, the sparing of healthy tissue with, with very high intense beam, also when the beams are generated by, by laser. Uh, our target uh, is to reach in the first stage uh, to, to acquire laser with a power that will be between uh, 19 and 250 terawatt. Uh, we will start with, uh, with the lower uh, 90 terawatt for, for sure, so with a pulse duration that is uh, around 25 femtoseconds and the repetition rates up to five hertz in order to improve the, the, the repeatability of the measurement. Even if the old the whole system will be designed to be upgradable up to one uh, petawatt. So you can see here, this is the layout of our lab. This is a very huge experimental area. There are not dimensions here, but this is around 20 meters, 25 and 20 meters. This is around nine meters. So we have this huge uh, experimental area uh, that is already prepared to receive beam from cyclotron and, and, and the tandem from our conventional accelerator. And uh, here we will install uh, in one part of this uh, area, we will install uh, a clean, the clean room with a laser system, while uh, the, the part on the right uh, will be used uh, to uh, prepare two different irradiation stations. One station will be dedicated to the acceleration, mainly proton acceleration, and uh, one station will be dedicated to the interaction of the plasma generated with the laser plasma interaction with proton with ion beam that came from the uh, cyclotron and tandem that are installed more or less uh, in this uh, in okay in, from this side of uh, of this feature so we expect uh, energy of the protons in the first fight around the 59 mv that will allow you we to will allow us sorry to explore this uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, um, this field um, well, what we can do with such kind of, of laser? There is a huge list. I will be very fast. This is my last slide, basically. Uh, dosimetry and radiobiology, that is uh, something that uh, we already mm, do in many facilities around the world, using electron, protons, and gamma generated by this laser matter interaction. There is the possibility to uh, use uh, laser generated protons. Uh, for pixel studies, this is something that we uh, already do at uh, LI in collaboration with the LI guys. Uh, space application, uh, because you can easily generate uh, very huge energy spectra, also with different uh, uh, composition of uh, ions uh, in order to somehow simulate some very particular space uh, uh, condition. Radioisotope production uh, that can be do also with completely new scheme. Uh, you can produce with laser. You do laser are compact system that can be able can help you to generate new kind. Okay, different beam like for example uh, in a very compact way like for example helium beam or proton itself with a very high high repetition rate. And we are confident that uh, in this field that we are developing with uh, uh, the Queen University and some colleague uh, at LI as well to, 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 to try to make an improvement on, on, on this side, there is the possibility to make 
imaging also at the molecular level because you have very you generate in the interaction not only protons of course you produce also electrons i don't speak about this but you have electrons you have photons x-ray very fast very short or you can generate neutrons and uh, something that i want to mention uh, because it's a work that we are doing somehow in parallel is the study of the nuclear reaction in plasma we are particularly focusing on the uh, proton boron reaction uh, actually there is uh, a cost action that uh, was submitted and we hope to get a good result within may with the many institutes there are more than 30 that the institute uh, one of our colleague uh, that is uh, uh, Dimitri Batani that some of you should know uh, is in is is uh, somehow driving this uh, this uh, cost action that is on the use of uh, uh, the proton boron reaction for this different application uh, basically for energy production and uh, for medical uh, for medical application and uh, yeah in this we have both the collaboration with the companies uh, and we made a lot of study in different facilities in order to uh, try to investigate the possibility to use uh, the nuclear nuclear reaction uh, for uh, basic science but also for energy production and uh, something that i not, not mentioned is that uh, here we will have uh, a third uh, let's say i call it this uh, uh, something like experimental experimental uh, experimental uh, uh, station where uh, with the, a lower power uh, laser um, laser uh, that came from the uh, directly from the oscillator or something around 30 40 50 millijoule we can uh, uh, define a station to perform uh, uh, fusion studies uh, and uh, with the, the perspective of improve the Emission capability of this system and and so on. Uh, and the last uh, things, uh, but uh, I think it's very important. It is not that it was covered by this. That is the fact that uh, I, at the NFN uh, we have uh, some unique capability. I mean, it's not unique, but it's really very very. There are very few places in, around the world where there is the can be the possibility to have uh, in the same chamber, in the same, same interaction chamber, uh, beams that came from ion, uh, also intense from cyclotron from the tandem, and beams and plasma, very high dense and stable plasma that came from the laser, laser interaction with, with the target. So this uh, open uh, uh, new possibility of uh, physics uh, uh, and investigation with the where, where the same beams generated by the laser can be used as probe for, for uh, some condition, or the beam itself can be used as probe of the plasma as well, and, uh, and so on. So that's all. Thank you very much to, for listening. Sorry if I uh, used more time than uh, expected. No problem. Thanks a lot Sorry, uh, for this. Uh, I try to, very, to make this possible. Very nice, uh, very nice talk and very very nice journey into this uh, fascinating topic. So I think uh, to express uh, on behalf of everybody the thanks. Uh, I don't know how to clap, but we can uh, we can use reaction to <laughs> to clap <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, thanks. So I think the the talk is open for question. I want to stress that we are very numerous. We arrived seventy eight, but we are more. So I see the the right hand by Luca by Luca, Luca is correct. Yeah. Ciao, Luca. Ciao, ciao, Lucio. Uh, thank you, Pablo, for your nice uh, ciao, Luca, thank you. ciao. I have a question concerning the quality of the proton ion beam that is generated by TNSA. Um, you quoted in uh, one of your slides uh, very good, uh, very small values for the emittance. This one, but you also said, but you also said that the energy spectrum is very broadband, and the divergence of the beam is very large. Let's say compared to a typical cyclotron based or linear no, no, based exactly. proton beam. No, so no, I am wondering, um, you know that there are many studies published in the literature and probably one of the main author, Mauro Miglioratis, in the audience. Uh, there are many papers showing 
that these kind of beams are affected by strong chromaticity effects. Uh, and if you transport these beams, even in uh, drift space, uh, uh, the emittance will be uh, strongly diluted by chromaticity effects. And also the bunch length will be increased. In fact, in one of your last slides, you were quoting nanosecond bunch length instead of picosecond. So my question is, um, is there anybody that is addressing these issues, these fundamental issues of beam phase space quality? Are there, let's say, programs for, uh, for trying to trying. solve these basic problems? Uh, yes, Luca, thank you. No, you are uh, completely true, of course. Uh, of course. Um, there are, uh, okay, th 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 there are groups that are working on, uh, on try to improve uh, at the target level the, 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 um, the emittance of the beam. Perhaps you was referring to this slide or uh, when you say that I said- uh, uh, Probably, one okay. before this, a few before this. Mm, okay, yeah. but by the way, I think we we're quoting a table from yes, um, some before. I remember. Uh, from yeah. Okay, okay, but by, by the way, there are there are people that uh, try to work uh, at the target level, uh, like in this case. This is, a, for example, a solution. That, okay, I said some good things, but I don't mention the <laughs> the, the negative part. In, for example, in this case, that is a, a solution that can be useful to try to, to focus the beam directly at the interaction point. Uh, the, the, the fact is, for example, in this case, is that when the laser arrives, completely destroy the target. So you have uh, the problem to have uh, a reproducibility of the beam. No, with, with, with laser, uh, with, with our beams from cyclotron, we uh, are used to have a continuous beam somehow. No? So, in, in the case of laser, uh, this, is a, this, this is something very far. And yes, and the solution that, uh, that uh, for example, we are trying uh, in a, uh, to, to do is to, 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 to construct uh, some transport beam line in order to modify the emittance of the beam along the transport. The bunch duration will change and will enlarge. This is true as well. And uh, what I can say is that the answer is uh, uh, no, because there are not so much people that is working on the, on the field of, um, of try to improve the, the emittance, uh, simply because uh, at least up to now, the community of uh, accelerator, it's, uh, I think, very far from the community of uh, people that worked with laser. And uh, I uh, can report the, our experience in, uh, in the different facility before, but now also at LI, where we are starting with uh, really a lot of effort to, to try to make in communication to different worlds that very often make an experiment uh, with just one or two shot, but they focus is not uh, the focus to obtain uh, a continuous beam uh, that is with very suitable characteristics to perform the experiment as we are used to do. And uh, so, yeah, so the problems that you mentioned, uh, it's correct, the beam is very wide in, uh, in angle. So we have 20, 30 degree of divergence with the TNSA scheme, I mean, because there are different acceleration schemes that uh, can be uh, activated when the laser power increase or when you decrease uh, still the thickness uh, of the foil. There are some regime uh, like ball holding or the light sail in which you, I don't report that this plot, there are, there are experiments in you can, where you can see beams, for example, uh, with a much higher uh, monochromaticity, let's say, where you can observe some uh, peak yeah. in the energy, okay? So space. not that very broad beam that you observe with the, <laughs> with the, with the TNSA. For the TNSA, that is the, 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 the easier uh, at, at, the mo at the moment uh, uh, 
uh, regime because uh, is the, the regime that you can obtain starting uh, from 10 to 18 watt per centimeter square and that is easily reachable in any in any facility laser high power facility uh, yeah you have this very broad beam and uh, when the beam is transported uh, it is enlarged in in time as well and uh, yeah <laughs> I don't know if I answer the Lucas. Gra grazie, Paolo. Thank you. I it, it just as a quick comment, if Lucio allows yes, me. Go ahead. I take your I take your comment in a positive perspective. Sure. I yeah. agree with you that the accelerator community should get itself more involved in studying and addressing problems that are in common with other particle accelerators in order to improve the performances of these. Uh, New sure, sure, Luca. I, I, I want to comment uh, on top. Uh, one of the of the main goal of uh, our our activity, I mean, uh, of, of, of the Eli Beamline activity. One of the main reason why we start uh, basically to realize, uh, and this is an, a, a common a common idea among us and among and, and I, I report certainly also the 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 idea of the Eli people. The reason why we realize that the, this beam line is yes to allow in the future to perform a, a experiment with such kind of beam that are somehow modified and uh, and that are made uh, closer to the to the beam from, from our accelerator but a, a, a perhaps a most more important reason is to try to uh, make uh, yeah to 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 allow that this new community, but there are three communities, I can say, because there is also the community of people that realize uh, detectors and, and people and people that make diagnostic, uh, uh, so diagnostic acceleration technique and laser. Uh, I hope that in the future we'll uh, really work together in, in for the preparation of new experiment and see different problems and solve different problems together. This is really one of the main goals that we have uh, that we had when we started the, the idea of, of this of this beam and that I this beam line that I hope that we will get in the next future when the beam finally will be commissioned and ready for the for the community for, for, for research. Okay, thanks. I think we went through this uh, point. I don't know if some but there are other questions. I see Giovanni Bisotti with the right hand. Uh, thank you very much, Lucio. Ciao Pablo. Uh, one, one uh, a couple of quick questions tech, tech, of technical nature and a more, let's say, one of general character. So you mentioned uh, uh, that the therapy of breast cancer for with energy is going up to 40 MeV. Uh, as, as I recall, uh, uh, canal for protons is starting from 70 MeV upwards. And uh, as I understand also the, the precision in energy is an issue that you want to take into account. Uh, is that uh, already compatible with this low energy and with the energy precision that we have? And the other question is, is the machine, this I don't know completely from the cost point of view, is it economically competitive by, by how much with respect to typical uh, therapy facilities? Uh, this, the second, so these are already, already with political nature, sorry, and the, uh, probably a third one is that there is, I see a lot of excitement around your facility, uh, at least in Italy, uh, uh, among the users. How do you see the user community uh, gathering around uh, these, let's say, not, not very close, but uh, not, also not so far opportunities that you might have? Sorry, three in one, sorry for that. Three in one. So the first uh, one is on the accuracy of the, of the beam. Uh, Yes. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, and, no. and and extent exactly. of energy also. Accuracy and uh, I, I, I take note. <laughs> I I take note. Um, no, okay. Uh, for the first uh, for the first one, there is a misunderstanding because uh, unfortunately there is not so much time, but it's better now to discuss. So just to be clear, the BCT project uh, that I mentioned is a project that deals with the breast cancer therapy. There is involved a different, uh, in fact, the institute. We will not uh, use uh, the and and related to the. Uh, we will not use uh, uh, protons uh, uh, generated uh, by the laser matter interaction to, uh, with the idea to study a treatment in the breast, but just to have uh, uh, the possibility to study the flash condition, that is uh, the possibility to have a very high dose rate uh, beams 
also at the lower energy because the bio, from the biological point of view you can observe and study this kind, such kind of phenomena also with the, uh, less energy uh, but not with the, the aim to treat uh, uh, a breast cancer that in fact uh, cannot be treated not with 16 but you need uh, at least 120 mAg uh, for a good for a good yes. treatment and in this breast cancer therapy there are uh, uh, people that uh, are studying uh, drugs and radio sensitizer for uh, treatment of the breast also with the conventional system and conventional radiation like electron and photons uh, while we are uh, uh, more in this small field of try to demonstrate the possibility to use uh, uh, this uh, very short in time and intense beam from uh, laser matter interaction to for a future application in uh, flash therapy. Okay, so it's something that is uh, uh, more related to research and development and not to clinical direct clinical application. Uh, this is the first thing. The second thing uh, are the cost. The cost, uh, yeah, this is a very complicated uh, question because uh, uh, to produce, uh, it depends, uh, I mean, to many factor. Uh, what I can say, to be honest, uh, the use of laser uh, or beam accelerated by laser, uh, at least for proton, because for electrons, the, the situation is quite different because uh, you need less complex machine. But for the moment, for proton, if we speak of protons, uh, yeah, the clinical application is still uh, very far. One of the reason is the quality of the beam that you have also, Luca said, you have uh, to transport and, and, very, and the, the precision, the energy distribution, so on. From the point of view of the cost, uh, let's say, uh, a laser system to accelerate uh, 60 MeV, let's say, the cost of a laser system uh, of such kind, let's say, to have 300 terawatt, uh, 300 terawatt laser is around uh, 4 million euros. Okay. You need 4 million euros to have uh, a machine, including the, the compressor, uh, including the photomuting system, to have uh, to generate, let's say, 60 MAB of proton. So five million, let's say five million. So if you want some number and uh, the problem, so the price, I don't know. It's, it's too complicated to say, uh, I think to make a comparison cost because the, the frontier is very far still because then this beam has been transported. Then you have the problem of radio protection. In principle, it's very, it's very easy to transport the light. No? Light, the laser can be transported very easy. You can reach uh, the target. You have no problem with the radio protection, for example, because so you spare a lot of money in construct a very huge building with the with the radio for the radio protection side. Then when you produce this beam that's very huge, you produce X-rays, you produce uh, uh, electrons, uh, you have to shield in any case the patient from this. So you have to find solution for this. People are studying. There are groups that are studying. We also are trying to make some improvement in, on this. So the answer is, uh, from the point of view of the cost, uh, probably a laser system that is able to produce a 60 MeV is not uh, much expensive than a system, uh, than accelerator that produces uh, produce protons of the same energy. But uh, we are too far in terms of quality and ability in transportation and uh, to, 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 to think that uh, this can be today used for in, clinic, in the clinical okay, practice. Okay. Thank you, thank you very Something much. different uh, there is with photon beams and electron beams. Uh, the electrons are uh, easier than protons. Uh, photo compact system, for example, uh, to make radiography start to be start to be something that can be effective also for the market because uh, to produce electrons of Bremsstrahlung photons, uh, you need the very small laser, tab tabletop laser. To make the experiment that I mentioned at the end, where you can produce, uh, let's say, one MeV, two MeV of protons, uh, and uh, 30 MeV electrons, this stay on my table. So a very small system. And then, OK, that, that, in this case, the situation is, uh, is changing. And probably the light uh, is closer. And then there was the 
the third uh, third question i don't remember the opportunity like, uh, on, on the users for example can you imagine then the, the interaction of the beam from the tandem with the plasma is something that you can uh, use rather rather soon right is that rather practical so do you have yeah. a stand of users which are showing interest in this facility from from let's say reasonably uh, near days let's say near future and near future uh, yeah we need to install the laser uh, we need to oh, no, once, to... It, once it is built of course <laughs> <laughs> uh, on this topic uh, specifically no but the community that use the laser beam for application for medical application but also for uh, nuclear physics study or astrophysics studies uh, and also for stopping power understanding is very huge and uh, that what we are installed that in our lab will be a facility completely open to the to the to the community to the user community it will be part of our uh, let's say uh, system of machine it, it, it's it, it's another source of beams that will be put at disposal for any user that wants so i think that it will be a good uh, yeah good opportunity for uh, for everyone to have uh, to have a facility that is dedicated to to experiment of such kind uh, such kind of experiment thank you very much Carlo. thank you very much. okay other uh, other comment or question i don't see right hand if, oh, if i don't i don't see any <laughs> So I have one, I have one, so I can intervene. So about the target, which is something simple and so on, but you said if this is destroyed any time you shot on the beam, uh, then, then you have to replace the target. Uh, there is a problem of accuracy, positioning and so on, or the target is something easy. And, uh, and because I imagine that uh, at a certain point, you would need to arrive to a certain repetition rate. For the moment, as you said, is a study, is a development, it's clear. So even if you go to one earth, it's clear that it is more than enough and so on. Then later on, a machine that will produce something, probably you want to go to 10, 100 earths or something like this. I don't know if the laser, you can have it, but one day you can imagine the laser also will be getting better. So this point also the positioning system and so on. Is it difficult, the positioning system of the target yeah. for replacement of the target? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for, uh, for this, the, the, we should have, uh, let's say, a dedicated seminar. <laughs> Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> I just okay. uh, I just mentioned yeah very few <laughs> few few words about this. The, the target uh, is uh, one of the most uh, important aspect, in fact, of the of the laser uh, of the laser target interaction. And uh, when I say it, uh, it's not sufficient to have a laser and to have a target. You must be able also to. Uh, focus correctly the the laser on the target, you know, and uh, the, the at the beginning of this history, the target was completely fixed because at that time when uh, uh, this this physic this this kind of study started around 200, uh, 2000, and also also so yeah, the year before the target was fixed. So it was just one shot. Uh, the target was destroyed, but this also because the repetition rate was very low over the beam. Uh, now, the, which is the, the solution that are adopted uh, are uh, of uh, the most common are of two kind. One is uh, to have uh, a target like the one that I show in my uh, first slide. Uh, I can uh, get again uh, this one, you see? So this is the, the system that uh, take the, where the target is. Inside, there are all these holes. So you can imagine a foil, a very thin foil, that is sandwiched between uh, these, uh, these, these are two play. Oh, I have a target uh, on, my, on, my, on my table here. You can see? Uh, you have to yeah. put more near. I think you have to put more near. OK, now I see it. I see it. OK, easy. so this is, this, is, this is, these are two pieces. In, 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 the, in the center, you put uh, a slice of some material, aluminum, uh, gold, what you, what, yeah. you, what you want, then close, and then you have to focus the laser in this hole. Okay. Then generally, you have a system that move very fast this, uh, uh, this, assist with the, this frame, with this holder, with the holes. So you move very fast. Very fast, I mean, at one second. One second, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. At LI, for example, we work with one second. 
The point is that each of these uh, uh, hole must be focused one by one yeah. with the precision around uh, one micron, let's say. <laughs> so, so it's a, it's a, it's a problem. So this is this is this is a way. Uh, another solution is to use uh, some tape target. So you have uh, some uh, yeah. tapes uh, like, uh, for example, like uh, you know the 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 whole the uh, the whole the music uh, cassette. I don't I don't know. Yeah, yeah clear the cassette. Where, where you have this tape that uh, that move continuously, and you have the beam that uh, uh, interact with this. Uh, there are very nice solutions that people is developing. For example, uh, there is uh, the case in which people uh, use uh, liquid hydrogen, for example. So you have uh, uh, some pipe that is, uh, uh, that is mounted uh, on the vacuum chamber, and then you have this liquid hydrogen that uh, flow down, and uh, the beam, the laser beam is uh, focused on this uh, very thin drop continuous flow of hydrogen. And I, I, the, there are papers on this. This is very interesting because in this case, uh, you can improve, of course, the repetition rate up to, to the 10 Hertz, surely perhaps uh, 100, of, uh, 100 of the Hertz, probably. No, no, it's clear. In this way, you are limited only by the laser the yeah. repetition rate of the laser, basically. Yeah, on the vacuum in the chamber somehow okay. because you could do some debris. But yeah, but mainly on the on the laser. And today, the 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 the, the higher repetition rate for a laser of such power is ten hertz. But you have but the perspective is that the community will be able to generate high power laser at still higher repetition rate. In fact, one of the perspective for the use of laser infusion for, for inertial confinement, for example, is the fact that you probably will grow towards such kind of system that will be able to, to support much higher power okay. still uh, with higher repetition rate. So. It is not a question, it's just a curiosity. But this type of laser that you use, are the same laser that Massimo Ferrari and company are using uh, for Eofraxia? I mean, the development of the laser, the, let's say the gun, the laser is the same, more or less. Laser yeah, is a yeah, laser. The characteristics the, of the, the laser characteristics are, are the same. Yeah, the characteristics of the laser are, uh, are quite similar to the one that is installed in flame, where in fact we performed the experiment uh, for test diagnostic in the past. And uh, yeah, sure, sure. It's, uh, Okay. Quite similar, right? So, I mean, can change technology is changing now. Perhaps now there are some improvements okay, but, in light transportation, but yes. But also the wavelength of the of the laser uh, does yes, matter. Yes. The you more or less is the same that they use in new new practice and so on. This in laser acceleration for a for for particle uh, let's say for a classical laser call it classical pla <laughs> laser yes. uh, plasma acceleration. Okay, not I said in new practice is not correct, but in the similar. In the twin uh, part of, yeah, of yeah, yeah, laser accelerator. Okay, okay. Other question, maybe. Other question. Otherwise, I want to do last cover. They profit. So, uh, going back to the question of uh, Luca and also in part of Giovanni about uh, the the inverters and the meters, I, I have just a question. Looking at your slide, I was thinking, and especially after the observation of Luca, while you were discussing, I thought the most si similar uh, system that uh, I know from my other study is the Moon Collider generation. Also there, somehow you shot not a laser, but a particle beam against the target, and you get a, a very bad emittance beam. In fact, in the Moon Collider, the worst thing is uh, the cooling. You have to cool immediately, so you have to have a better emissions. Uh, in I this totally case, agree with you, Lucio. <laughs> so, but uh, what I want to say, I know you have, in fact, that's why you have another scheme. But what I want to say in this case, what is very helpful is to trap the beam immediately with strong solenoid. In fact, in the new design of the cooling scheme, they're thinking to use 10, 15, even if 20 tons of solenoid, not only the capture solenoid, but also for the cooling cell and so on, to basically to keep the, to keep the, uh, the, the, the the moon in the solar. So I saw that at a certain point in the slide, me while you were answering to look, uh, I saw a solenoid. So is this also a valid scheme in your case? Uh, just to keep, uh, let's say- Yeah, the, yeah, there is people the that, uh, that work uh, in trying to apply solenoids uh, for such kind of, uh, I, I, I was inserting a slide and I deleted 
because I have to put oh, much more material. Uh, for example, the, yeah, the, the, there is people that there are groups that study the effects of very high magnetic field generated by solenoids when a laser, uh, another laser, a second laser that is synchronized with the first one impact with, the, for example, another, sol another, another uh, let's say, coil, where you generate basically magnetic field uh, from another laser. So you have a very high and huge magnetic field that is generated in some, in some coil and you use this to cool the beam. And yes, these are all, but not only these, also the cooling scheme are used. And there is people that is, uh, that is, that is working on this as well. Okay, yes. so it's really an open, an open territory. That is it's a completely open, yes. In, in fact, when I say to the target, you should, do, you should have a seminar, no? Because they, because there is really, really a huge quantity of uh, things that, uh, yeah, interaction with magnetic field, um, it's uh, something that uh, really opens space for okay. many kinds yeah, of... Uh, can I make a general comment? Sure, sure. Uh, clearly, you cannot rep just replicate the ionization cooling scheme with protons. <laughs> just because protons don't lose energy by ionization like muons. So the idea of adopting a strong solenoid at the source is good in order to decrease the solid angle. That is true, but it's not enough in order to take the emittance under control because the chromaticity effect is working because of the high energy spread at the source, uh, coupled to the large divergence. And so that is not a solution per se. And it may be a good component for a good solution, but it's not a good a, a solution, uh, a complete solution, no. like in the muon ionization cooling scheme. Sure. In fact, uh, this, a, 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 good, a good point is to try to use different acceleration scheme in which uh, you are able to produce the more monochromatic exactly. scheme directly with muons, you have also to post accelerate muon in order yeah, to yeah, get sure. the, completely the, the bit. cooling effect. Otherwise, <laughs> you don't get the cooling. <laughs> okay, absolutely. Okay, there is other question. Oh, maybe and, a quick, quick, quick one triggered by, by this discussion. You, you mentioned several times, Pablo, that there are different systems with better properties. <laughs> that triggers the curiosity that maybe TNSA is not, uh, is not ideal. Can you quickly comment? Uh, uh, no, the yeah, there are different uh, there are different regime uh, that uh, are studied uh, that, that that are studying that people are studying. Uh, some of these are completely theoretical models okay. because still we have not the power the sufficient power. Some of these uh, of these uh, these are starting to be observed once the um, now the in fact the 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 bat per centimeter square that you are able to, to, to produce in the target is approaching to 10 to 20 to 22 and with very thin target. Uh, no, I don't mention this a lot because the, yeah, there are regimes in which basically uh, different physics mechanisms start to, and start to produce ele electric field components that are able uh, inside the target to directly focusing basically the beam, for example, and produce some more monochromatic beam. So always you have a lot of component, but you have some component, for example, that is, uh, that is uh, I mean, you, you, you lose the typical spectra from a TNSA that, uh, as I show you in some slide, I don't remember where, is completely, uh, I will try, it's completely, I mean, it, it, it's one hundred percent of divergence. Like this, for example, no. We have here. Uh, uh, this, is, this is a logarithmic scale. So we have here uh, something from zero up to some cutoff. So you have practically everything. And with this scheme uh, that can be reachable, for example, uh, when you use uh, special target with the nanometer thickness, uh, uh, you are able to catch some. Uh, component, energetic component is more monochromatic, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's something that the community is starting to study because the, the regime uh, act, are activated at higher uh, <coughs> uh, laser power and uh, most of the time, 
when you get results, you get a mixture of uh, of component in the acceleration. No? Many times you have the component that came from the TNSA that is still active, and the component from uh, like say Lacrosse, for example. So, so still, TNSA is still the main the main role. It's the still the main because it's the one that uh, is it can be reached with the power that we have at disposal in this in this moment. Okay. You know, just one last comment, so just because the, the please, question uh, that please, yeah, yeah, please, yeah, yeah, that uh, Luca pointed out was my same question. So, if I'm right uh, regarding uh, the energy spread, uh, um, the point is much more involving the, the target. Is it right? Yeah, because with about um, regarding um, okay the divergence, you can have something, you can put the solenoid or something like that. But if you want really to work on the energy spread, you have really to work much more on the interaction on the target. So that's right. Ta yes, in the target, or you can uh, select the beam uh, during the trap. Yeah, also later, probably. Yeah, doing yeah. something later, like you say now. Yeah. Like that, that is the, yeah, the easiest solution, the, the solution that uh, people that is starting uh, in the facility to perform, uh, let's say, uh, systematic studies uh, with this kind of beam uh, decide to adopt. Uh, there are, there will be, basically there are in this moment in the world, uh, four beam line that uh, mm -hmm. one is in Dresda, one is, okay, one is, uh, let's say they are thinking to do something similar in Munchen. One is the LI beam line and uh, one uh, is the, the uh, one is in in in, in the in, in Bella in, in the in the states, and uh, there is the PISA facility that I mentioned where we are working, where we are trying to realize this beam line. And in any of this beam line, the solution, yeah, people laser people work on target people, and try yeah. to optimize interaction. But the solution, if you want to pro study this beam, that, that this beam. Okay, you are looking to the bad characteristics of the beam, no, okay. but there are, or, no, there no. are also nice. No, no, I mean, okay, I but no, no, no. As, as, <laughs> no, no, as, as, joking, Luke, as Luca mentioned, we were just to yeah, understand yeah, yeah. better no, 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 which are I'm... the possibility, <laughs> you know, because- Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm but, joking, I mean- Of course. No, we, we are interested, this is the reason why, because we want to understand yeah, yeah, yeah. if we, we, something can be done. As also Luca fact, said, and in, in, in all these facilities, what we have, when we started with, with Eli, with Elimed, we said, okay, what we can do in the easiest way to try to produce a beam at the end that is uh, as similar as possible with the beam from accelerator and still give it to the community and to the user the possibility to use this beam. So yeah. the easiest thing is to, okay, focus and select after you produce this. Mm -hmm. But the study on the target is really, really one of the most, I, I agree with you at all, is one of the most interesting uh, things in this uh, in this field, and there are many schemes that are studied. Not only theoretical schemes, there are also solutions that use uh, yeah, magnetic field or uh, particular target with composition or shape that are part that are different uh, that are used in, to to change uh, to try to improve the the the, yeah, yeah. the, okay. uh, the okay the, the, the... thanks 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 a lot. Unless there are burning question, I think it's time to close because it's beyond five. So uh, we want to thank again uh, Pablo and actually understand all the team. There is uh, many team from uh, NFN beside LNS. There is Milano, Pisa, and other probably. I forget it. So I understand. Yeah, there are huge, other. Yeah, sure, sure. Is a huge, uh, huge thing. Meanwhile, uh, the director Santo is say he's a lot to us. Um, I simply would give the floor to Tina. So thanks again, Pablo, uh, and all the community. You, for this one. 